to Ezra chapter 7 and Daniel chapter number 1. Ezra chapter 7 and Daniel chapter number 1. <clears throat> now this class, uh, my wife may interrupt the class to bring me my calendar. Uh, and if she does, we'll just take a little second. But uh, I, uh, I want to uh, do something a little bit more practical. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And, uh, and I think this will be very helpful, especially starting our new year out. And so I'm going to talk about just the, the subject of preparation. <clears throat> Thank you, sweetheart. <clears throat> All right, she brought the calendar. Thank you, daughter. <clears throat> now, so what I want to do is I'm going to kind of give you how I do things and then from a biblical standpoint, personally, practically, and then we'll give you guys time to ask questions. And the reason Brother Jack and I have talked about this many times, Brother Charles has mentioned it many times, when we first got started, there was a lot of stuff people did, but a lot of the practical stuff was overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you've noticed over the years that I have a lot of focus on the practical side of Christianity. Uh, and you're going to get both the heavy stuff and the practical stuff. So what I want to do is I want to cover the, 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 the information, uh, give you some time to ask questions, and I'm going to kind of show you how I do things, and uh, maybe it'll help you get through this other year. So anyway, let's have a word of prayer, and let's get started. Now, Father, uh, Lord, we thank you for a great week. Uh, Lord, this season has been wonderful for people being saved. And, yeah. Uh, Lord, we thank you for keeping us going, and Lord, there's still a lot of sickness out, and so we ask you to help it get through quickly so things can move on. Uh, Lord, you know those who, uh, who are coming that should be here. Uh, some are not making the effort, uh, but some are, and I just pray you'd make a way for them. <coughs> now, Lord, our time together is very important to us. Uh, Lord, we're not just talking. We want you to do something supernatural. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the help all these years. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, we pray you'd go before us. Look down the road, Lord, keep the, your servants from sin and presumptuous sin and foolishness. Lord, we don't want to fall by the way before you come. Yeah. Help us to be faithful, yeah. we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Ezra, tra Ezra chapter 7. Yes, sir, Brother Charles. Uh, maybe you could hit the point somebody to call this guy. Okay. Put a personal phone call to them. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can do whatever we can to make it work. Uh, because I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do something else if this is not gonna be profitable. I, there's a lot of things I can do, and so we can take another direction with all this if if this is not gonna be profitable. But I want our time to be profitable. Okay. All right. Ezra chapter seven. So we're gonna talk about the subject of preparation tonight, and. To me, uh, I think most of the time, now I don't, I can't even spell. Sometimes I think people are looking for an opportunity and then they spend their time preparing. But if you would spend your time preparing, it would make way for an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Not backwards. Okay? So in Ezra chapter number seven, we're going to deal with a very, very practical part of it first, and then we'll talk about some other things. Uh, but I want to start the new year off right, uh, and the Lord's been really good to us to say that. Uh, we, and when I say that, I mean <laughs> I can't even uh, uh, scratch the surface when I say how good the Lord's been to us. And, uh, and so uh, as I mentioned to you the other week, I want to do my part. God's certainly going to do his part. And I'm not sure you're aware that the Lord carries the heavy end of that. Amen. He does. <laughs> All right, Ezra chapter 7. <clears throat> and look, look at verse number 10, and I'm going to read the verse about three times, and then we're going to outline. Now, Ezra chapter 7 and verse number 10. Follow along closely, please. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes, or statutes and judgments. For Ezra had prepared what? Say it. His heart. His heart to seek the law of the Lord, and this notice this statement, and to do what? To do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. So, when we talk about preparation, we talk about preparation. Preparation has to be personal, and I know it's going to sound over simple, 
but there has to be there has to be a plan to the preparation and then obviously there needs to be some practice to the preparation so in this verse so he says he's he's going to prepare what was he going to prepare his heart not his notice the word his heart and uh, and maybe maybe this will make more sense to you. We spend more time preparing lessons and sermons than we actually spend time preparing ourselves. Right, right. Amen. Well, think right. about what I'm saying. All right, so how much time you spent on, say, a Sunday school lesson or a preaching opportunity or an opportunity to witness at work? But what about preparing ourselves? So preparation obviously has to be for he prepared his heart and to seek. The law, and then the practice is he makes sure that he's going to do it. And what's interesting, the doing it comes before the teaching it. Yeah. We have a lot of people teaching it that are not yeah. doing it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So look at the verse again. Look at the verse again. Ezra had prepared whose heart said? His heart. His heart. Now some of y'all are not awake. I don't need to. I don't need to do this all the whole hour. Okay, so he prepared what? Say it. His heart. His heart to seek the law of the Lord. And look at this statement again. And to do what? And to do it. And to teach in Israel. So the doing comes before the teaching. So again, we're talking about preparation. It has to be personal. There has to be a plan. I, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to practice it now. I know this is going to be overly simple, and even I know it's going to sound funny to you, but if you're not going to do it, you're not going to get any better at it. Right. Now, last night, Ty gave us a great example of that thing about free throws. And he talked about the only way to get better at it, like exercising our faith, you got to do it. you got to shoot it. you got to practice. Mm -hmm. And you realize that if you don't take no shots, then you miss every one of them. Right. Right. Amen. And uh, some of y'all are kind of apprehensive of uh, stepping out a little bit and doing it. And you're going to miss every opportunity if you don't do it. Okay. Now, so, now look at Daniel chapter number 1. Daniel chapter number 1. And we're going to come back to the Old Testament again. Brother John, thank you for coming tonight. Da Daniel chapter number 1. Daniel chapter number 1. <clears throat> now, Lord, we need some help tonight quickening us. Some of y'all are about to fall asleep. Uh, look at Daniel chapter number 1 and verse number 8. And we know this, but this is make the connection to where we are tonight. But Daniel, verse 8, he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now y'all look at me and I'm going to make a statement. If you want to write it down, you can. He made a personal decision that he would be different. He made a personal decision that he would be different. He made a personal decision that he would be, it was an individual, he purposed in his heart. Most people have no direction whatsoever. They just kind of go with the flow. And in our day and time, if you go with the flow, you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, you man. might you might want wind up a Democrat or woke even. Yeah, right. Some of y'all need to laugh a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> right, is everybody with me? Yes, sir. Also, right, we're talking about preparation. So again, let me ask you this: How much time have you spent preparing your heart? I'll say it this way: How much time have you spent uh, working on you? Amen. Now, I have bet that over this past year, you have thought about how bad someone else is doing or how good they're doing. Yeah. But how much time have you spent looking in the mirror to see how you're doing? That's good. It has to be personal. Right, right. Now, I'm gonna, if I have to, I'm going to say it a hundred times. If it doesn't mean anything to you, it will not mean anything to them. If it hasn't made a difference in you, it will not make a difference right. in them. Right. 
When the boys have talked to me about preaching and teaching in the past, that's between them and God. I said, son, if it's not helping you, it ain't going to help nobody else. It has to be personal. It shouldn't be mechanical. We shouldn't just be repeating a bunch of information. It should be something God is doing in our lives so it can be exercised in someone else's life. They should be seeing that. Amen. Now, let me give you some verses about somebody who didn't prepare. Go back to your left to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter number 12. 2 Chronicles chapter number 12. <clears throat> now, I think there's not enough preparation made personally. I think people live by the seat of their pants, and exactly. then when they have an opportunity, then they decide they're going to back up yeah. and get ready for something. Yeah. Yeah. And we are, we are construction workers by trade. If you were to hire us to paint the outside of your house and I didn't first clean it, you would think I was doing something wrong. Because preparation is absolutely necessary for application. Amen. Y'all understand you have to clean services before you paint them? Yes, sir. Right. You know the purpose of cleaning the service? So it sticks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Maybe the reason it don't stick with some of our people, the services are not clean oh, yeah. when they get here. Mm. We're just so greasy it slides off. I mean, why would you want to get right at the end of the service when you can get right at the beginning of the service yeah. or before you get here and enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now look at 2 Chronicles chapter number 12. <clears throat> 2 Chronicles chapter number 12. Notice how this thing is mentioned about the same thing about talking about Rehoboam, but notice verse 14. Look at it very closely. 2 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse number 14. Rehoboam, he did what? Evil. Did what? Evil. evil. Right. Why did he do evil? Because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Wow. Mm. Now that's a whole lot in a little bitty verse. Amen. <clears throat> a lot, most people, wow. these Americans spend a lot of time, they'll spend two or three hours getting ready on Sunday morning for church. Uh, physically for the outward appearance and they don't spend 30 minutes getting that heart ready to get here to get what you're going to need. Amen. There was a time around here where there was actually a buzz going on. People were hungry for God. Now we're kind of in the fog right now. Yeah. Look over in chapter 29. Go to your right. Chapter 29. Chapter 29. I think preparation is very, very important. And if I didn't study and prepare, you guys would be very disappointed. You'd probably be upset about it. Yep. And I spent a lot of time. This class was going to seem a little boring to some of y'all because of the simplicity of it. But I'm purposely doing this on purpose. Amen. <clears throat> now, look down in verse... <coughs> um, 2 Chronicles chapter 29. I lost my place. All right. Let's not. Let's see. All right. Look at chapter 27. I apologize. I've been trying to read my other Bible that's like this with no notes in it. And you, after all these years, this is my first time reading without notes and trying to find stuff that's interesting. <laughs> all right, look at chapter 27. I apologize. Verse 6, look at this. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Hmm. Now you see how much is said in those little bitty verses? Yeah. So the contrast is this one guy did evil because he didn't prepare, and this other guy became mighty because he prepared his way. Amen. Now, you say, well, where does this start? All right, go to the book of Psalms, please. Psalm chapter number 10. Psalm chapter number 10. <clears throat> we have, uh, in construction work, um, we went and looked at a house the other day, Brother Charles, and they had 10 years of storage inside the house. And those of you that don't know what a hoarder is, you follow a trail through the house. Right. 
And you realize that when you allow stuff to pile up for so long, you don't know where anything is. Yeah. And then, because you piled up stuff for so long, you just can't go anywhere you want to go. Right. You have to follow the trail that you actually made for yourself because all that stuff has been piled up for so long. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, look at Psalm chapter number 10. Psalm chapter number 10. Notice verse number 16. Psalm 10, verse 16. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of who? The humble. Desire of who? The humble. Thou will, look at this statement, prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear. Now, we're getting somewhere. So in this preparation of his heart, God's doing something while he's doing something, and guess what shows up? This age-old word of humility. Amen. And in our circles, humility is missing in a big way. Amen. Now, I don't mean acting like something in front of us and then acting a different way at home. I don't mean that. I'm talking about privately, personally. Have you ever got yourself and humbled yourself before God and allowed the Lord to work on you about something specific that you've been running from for years? Amen. Humility is going to allow God to start preparing our heart. And uh, what's unpleasant is the Lord starts uh, start peeling back layers and saying, look, Freddie, really, really, the problem is you. Yeah. Now, this is the only probably disappointing part of the whole class. And I want you all to hear me. You've heard me say this many times. I'm going to say it again. The biggest person's problem that you're ever going to deal with is going to be you. Yep. Yep. Amen. And you don't need to never forget that. Right. I know this is going to sound silly to some of you, but it isn't what other people think about you that bothers you. It's what you think of you. Right. Amen. That's good. You and I are our own worst enemy. Yesterday, Miss Veronica has been, been struggling because she finally got the death certificate back and Michael passed away. And so she's rehashing everything again. And she's all tore up and upset. And so I say to her, just please don't beat yourself up because of the way you feel. You know what happens? We get sideways or we have struggles, and then we make it worse by beating ourselves up because of how we're responding. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so this act of humility, you know, look at Proverbs chapter 16. I'll show it to you again. I think the missing element in our preparation is our lack of humility. Proverbs chapter number 16. Proverbs chapter 16. <clears throat> you there? Say amen. 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 All right, look at verse number 1. Again, connection with Psalm chapter 10. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from who? Now you see how that preparation is? So what is what is somebody tell me what God does to the proud? What does he do? Humble them. Huh? No. He resists them. No. Amen. Well, what does he do to the humble? He helps them. Amen. God resisteth the proud, James 4. Yeah. Right? But those who humble themselves, God's mighty hand exalts them in due time. Now, the reason that I'm focusing on this is that you can cover up your lack of spirituality with your busyness mm -hmm. or your gifts or your personalities. Let's see if I need to say this. I'll, 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 just, I'll try to say it discreetly. We had a guy, let me say, let me say it this way. I knew a guy. One guy who uh, who committed adultery on his wife, and this is a, this guy was a great guy, but he had such a wonderful personality that he was friends with everybody, both male and female. 
Everybody loved this guy. But what he did, he allowed that gift and that personality, he dropped his guard because he was not more concerned about his personal private life and his heart. He let that guard down and he sinned against the Lord and his wife and ended up in being divorced. And it doesn't matter who it is, but all I'm saying is this, is that you can cover, you can cover up that with business and your personality and even your gifts. Mm. Yeah. This has to be first. Do you brush your teeth? Do you brush your teeth? Oh, yeah. Do you brush your teeth? Well, sure you do. You know why? Because you realize your breath's going to stink, something's going to build up, but we don't treat our spiritual lives that way. We let things pile up, pile up, pile up, and then we bring in the dozer after God. See what I'm saying? But do you realize that if you just keep that thing, keep the trash taken out every day, Amen. it doesn't build up. Amen. I'm just telling you. Uh, so what happens if your favorite preacher sins against the Lord and runs off and does something wrong? You know what you're going to say? You're going to say, well, that guy must have not been right with God. Maybe he was right with God, but he let his guard down in this area. Yeah. Right. Look, you and I are not above it. Right. <clears throat> That's why that preparation has to be personal. This plan, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to, I am going to do it. And we'll get back to the other in a minute. We'll give you another example. While we're in Proverbs, look at Proverbs chapter 24. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 24. I just wonder, have you guys ever got along by yourselves without the stupid phone, without the TV, without the music, and just got alone and got quiet and asked the Lord, okay, Lord, is there anything in my life that needs to be dealt with? Amen. Look at Proverbs chapter 24. One more uh, illustration. One more illustration. Look at Proverbs chapter 24. Look at verse number 27. Proverbs 24 and verse number 20, 27. <clears throat> Notice he says, Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for who? Say the word. Thyself. Thyself. Make it fit for who? Thyself. Thyself. Notice this. And afterwards build thine house. Now, I know this sounds kind of silly to use, but I want you to understand, <coughs> excuse me, he says, make it fit for thyself. Now, this is important. Listen to me closely. I do better in the mornings. Brother Eddie said he's a night owl. He does better at night, okay? Do you know when you do better? Yeah. Uh, do you utilize that time for God or do you waste that? And then you give him what's not good. Right. You guys, while you're young, you better set some kind of habit that's going to carry you on to... Because some of these guys battle with it at their age because they, dis, they right. didn't do anything with right. it at your age. Right. right. Amen. And now they struggle with it. I do better in the morning. When I, I, and what I mean by that is my phone's not on. I don't use it for an alarm clock. Buy you an alarm clock if you're having trouble with it. Maybe 10 bucks. Yeah. The time in the morning from 5, 6, whatever, to 8, to 8, 30, 9 o'clock, my time, nobody else's time. And on the weekends, I'm up early before everybody. You say, why? Because that's my best time. When this is clean, yep. Yep. and I don't mean... That I'm, I'm, right. I don't mean overwrite. Y'all know what I mean. Amen. The day has not started. I don't have the busyness of the day or work or ministry or people or kids or all the, the, the bills and all that. And so it's fresh. Okay. Okay. So the verse says, make it fit for thyself. Okay. So what part of the day do you do better? Do you utilize that time? Amen. Now, I don't know all of y'all very well, but I can say this. Some of you, some of you, you need stuff to be scheduled for you. Right. <clears throat> you need more discipline because you don't have any discipline. Now, let me ask you a question. Your school, your work, most of your eating is all scheduled. What about your spiritual life? 
Amen. Amen. Hmm. When we go through the book of Acts, you'll know you'll find a verse in Acts chapter three where they went to the the ninth hour. I think it's the ninth hour. It was the hour of prayer. They had a set time every day that they set aside for God to pray. Amen. When I first got saved. Thankfully, I got in when still some of the old stuff was still around. Thank the Lord. Brother Charles, I knew an old man. Every time he opened his mouth, God just jumped out. I mean, God was just blowing off his guy. He had no idea. The most humblest. Every time I think of him, his name was Monroe. Every time I think of him, it's a rebuke of how humble that dear man was. He said, Brother Freddie, and he would just start crying. I mean, every time he talked about the Lord, he'd start crying. He said, every night at 8 o'clock, he said, you come to our house. He said, but at 8 o'clock, we go in the bedroom and pray. And either you can join us or you can sit in the living room and wait on us till we're done. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. That guy's life reflected that. Amen. Closer to the source, yeah. the brighter you shine. Yeah. Amen. Everybody follow? Amen. Now, let me just give you something else that's, that's very helpful. We're in a busy world, and I'm telling you, if you're not careful, you allow them to dictate your time, and you not dictate it. Yeah. My brother, he's only been mad at me twice in 24 years. One, because I was being stupid when I first came here, and the other time was he couldn't reach me on the phone. There was something was going on. I don't know if it was an emergency. I said, well, you can't reach me. My phone's not on. Why come your phone ain't on? Because it's my time. Do you understand? Once you, once you turn it on, once you go out those doors, the world's going to be cluttering you all day long. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. And all I'm saying is, if it's better for you in the morning, you better get it while it's hot. Yeah. Amen. How about this illustration? So, Gideon... Gideon says, Lord, I'll tell you what I want you to do is I want you to have this, uh, I'm going to set out this bowl. No, it was a rag. It was a cloth because yeah. he run out a bowl for it. Sorry. He said, I want, I want their dew to be on this and I want the ground to be dry. <clears throat> and when he came out the next morning, this thing was full of dew and he said he ran out a bowl for it. Yes. And then the next day he said, Lord, if you don't mind, he said, let this be dry. He said, let the dew be round about. He said, what are you trying to say? You got to get up early to see it. Mm -hmm. about that? that dew don't last all day. That's right. right. <laughs> Remember the book of Proverbs about his favors as the dew upon the grass? Mm -hmm. Yes. Has God ever woke you up early in the morning and you roll back on and went to sleep because you're tired? And was like, I've been trying to get you up for an hour. You got a lot going on today. I need to talk to you before you get going. And the other day it was 3.30. I, mean, I rode over and looked at the clock and I said, Lord, can you please give me another hour? I know it's him. Because I don't wake up at 3.30 all the time, but when it roll over, and then when I roll over and see 3.33, three, 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 after Brother A talked about that, Jeremiah 30, 3, 3, yeah. Lord's going, you got to get up. And I'm going, no, I'm tired. And I roll over for another hour, wide awake again. I said, can you give me another? See what I'm saying? And then I get up another hour. The Lord's done left. Yeah. Yeah. He's done and moved on. Amen. But I've been trying to get you up for two hours. Oh. Now look, y'all, the reason you're quiet is you know exactly what I'm saying to be true. Correct. Amen. Amen. I don't know about y'all, that just shows you how much the Lord cares about our personal, private Amen. time. And listen to me. You cannot be to these people, to your wife, to your children, what you ought to be without God. Amen. Amen. So here's what, here's what the old timers would say. They would say those who fail to plan, plan on failing. Hmm. All right, we're doing good on time. All right, so let me give you an illustration of what I do. All right, today, today's the 8th, is that right? Yep. Amen. All right, so let's go to the. So I, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do Proverbs three, if you don't mind. Let's do the Proverbs three. Let me let me show, give you kind of an idea of uh, how I do things. Brother Eddie gave out the reading chart. 
for this year. And those of you that are not a discipline, you need to get a chip chart if you're not a discipline. I do things differently and I do it on purpose because when I got saved, those of y'all that heard me, I couldn't hardly read, so I struggled with all that Old Testament stuff. Once I got past Genesis, I was having a hard time. Yeah. So what I started doing was I started reading Matthew through Revelation and reading the Old Testament at the same time. So every time I'd go through the Old Testament, I'd read through the New Testament three times. Because there's so much information. So that's, I read old and new at the same time because some of those dry spells in First Chronicles. Oh, I mean, you're repeating the tabernacle twice. Yeah. It's, it's great spiritual yeah. stuff. But dear Lord, you know, I'm not in the fix. And I'm like, can we just get on with this? <laughs> and so I read and I read in the New Testament at the same time. And it kind of keeps the fire burning while I'm going through the wilderness. Everybody follow that? Yeah. Amen. So when we've been talking about this thing of Proverbs, look at Proverbs chapter number three. So this is my calendar, and I've been doing this for three or four years now. Now, Look, this is not how everybody has to do it. I'm just giving an example of what helps me. The reason that I plan is because it helps me stay on track. Yeah. All right, so I've got notes on the back. I've got notes uh, in the inside. Every time I get something that helps me, like these notes here, these notes here, These notes here, all this stuff here is written in the front. I transfer them, transfer them every year because these are the things that's helped me. And some of the stuff in the front of this is what I'm talking to you right now. I've been saying 32 years, and the practical part about what I'm giving you will help you if you can make some effort about disciplining yourself. All right, mm-hmm. now, all right, so here we are, January. And so I'll write my work stuff in the, in the calendar, and then when I get to... The, uh, the days of the week, if you'll notice that over here I've got people's names. This is where Danny Kelly died last year on January the 2nd. And uh, Zach, we're just now getting Zach back to Texas at that time. And if you'll look on this side here, I've been trying to write neater so when I pass these down to my boys, they'll be able to read it. See how neat these paragraphs are? I'm trying to do better every year. These right. are my devotion stuff. Okay? This is the who I'm calling, who I'm following up with. These are, if you see something highlighted like this, this is something the Lord gave me while I was reading or studying. It's separate. This is my devotional stuff. Now, as far as the third, um, I didn't, in my devotion, I didn't do Proverbs chapter 3. What I did was, is I did David in 1 Samuel chapter number 22. Listen to my devotion for 1 Samuel on January the 3rd. It says, David attracted those in like condition. Mm -hmm. Those were in distress. Brother Jack mentioned it last night in debt. And here's the statement. Listen to this. Is what you and I are, is what you and I reproduce? David attracted some without pursuing them. David also reproduces men like him, warriors and conquerors. So the question is, what are we reproducing? Amen. Now, think about thinking about stuff like that all day. This is what I'm talking about, devotion. This is not my reading. This is my devotion time. And I don't mean just reading through your devotion like trust in the Lord with all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that a thousand times. Okay. What does it mean to you where you are? I'll tell you how real the verse is. Look at, look at Proverbs chapter 3. Those of y'all that don't know Brother Shane Reese, Brother Shane has uh, one of his legs gone from his, uh, from the, his nub right here. One of his feet has gone. I'm pretty sure it's his right foot, but I'm not 100% sure. So one day I was texting Shane my devotional passage. and look at this. Tell me what you would think. Verse 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and she shall keep thy foot from being taken. So where was he at? He was in the hospital. I was not, I didn't send him all that verse. I only sent him the first part of the verse, for the Lord shall be thy confidence not even paying attention to the latter part. He sent me the latter part go, do you think the Lord's going to heal my foot? I'm like, bro, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not insinuating that at all. 
but it meant something to him because it meant something to me. Mm. Does your devotion time mean anything to you at all? Yeah. You know what I think? I think you're too busy. See, the reason it's important, nobody's stealing this time. Amen. The other day somebody called me and said, hey, I'm sick. Can you bring me some food and drinks? I said, sure I can. But that was after my phone was already turned on, not before. Just think if somebody calls you tonight or in the morning and says, hey, can you come get me? I run out of gas and you go out in your car and you're out of gas. <laughs> I don't think you just got what I just said. You can't help nobody because you ain't got no gas. That's why you've got to stay filled up so when someone calls, you're ready to give out what you got. Yeah. Amen. That's good. But you're allowing everybody else to dictate that time. It's not going to happen. Look, this doesn't make people spiritual. It helps me stay on track. Is everybody with me? Amen. <coughs> All right, let's do uh, let's do one more. I'll let you ask questions. Go to Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter number two. I think some of y'all just need some more structure. Yes. I think you need yes. some more scheduling. It would help you. I know Brother Clint is the same way. He's got everything written out on a card, and he tries to follow that because some of us need that. Now look. Look, it is, doesn't make you spiritual. It just helps you stay on track. Amen. I don't know if I've got the card in my pocket or not. See, look at here. Look here. If you go next to my stuff, I've got ten of these laying around. And these got these got notes. Every page flipped up on the back. And what I do is once I get it developed, I transfer it into something I'm going to use. But there's no way to keep up with all these ideas. Oh, man. I just, I just remembered something. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. I need that. Unless you write it down. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. we got to do that. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. One more. And then i got to give you this other part. I don't know how I forgot it. All right, 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 20. 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to dishonor, some to dishonor. All right? Where does the honor come from? Verse 21. If a man therefore purge who? Say it. Purge who? Not your wife, not your mama, not your daddy, not your brother, not your sister, himself. From these he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. Look here, look at it again. And prepare Amen. unto every good work. Y'all see how that connected? That's good. Amen. Y'all heard me say this. I'll repeat myself. Clean glasses get used first. Now, let's do this thing about writing it down. Go back to the book of Malachi in the Old Testament. This has become huge to me. I'll explain why. And y'all forgive me for jumping off just for a minute, but this has got to be... It's actually in my notes, I just forgot. Look at Malachi chapter number 3, last book of the Old Testament. <clears throat> Malachi chapter number 3. I could care less if you go home and watch a football game. I could care less. But what I would do is you need to discipline yourself either tonight or tomorrow, preferably today. You need to make a note and say, hey, I'm getting on track. Yeah. And I'm going to start writing this stuff down. You know what I do when you guys preach and when y'all talk? I write everything down. Then I go back home and I go, I needed that. That's good. I'm going to write that down again. You say, why? So I can remember it. You mean to tell me you've remembered everything God has taught you in say the last amen. five years? Say amen. And Brother Charles has probably has the only memory like that. The rest of you do not. Brother Charles can remember a sermon. Now, he don't know where his keys are, but he can remember. Amen. Amen, Brother Clint. But he can remember a sermon from 50 years ago every point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the exception. You are not. Right. Amen. Look, look at this. I'm being dead serious. I bet you're sitting going, you know what, God, you changed my life three years ago, and I don't even remember what it was. 
because you didn't write it down. Amen. Malachi chapter 3, watch the illustration. Verse 16. If you want to preach on 3.16, here's another. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 16. Then, then they that feared the Lord spake and off one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it in a book of what? Remembrance. A book of what? Remember, was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. Now tell, now tell me, the Lord's like, you know what, if I'm going to remember all this, i got to write it down. Amen. And you know what? You can't remember unless you write it down. Amen. And the reason that I keep writing it down in every year, the other day I took four hours to write all this stuff down in the front of my new one. I wish I'd have brought it with me. And I added some stuff. So why do you do that? Because when you write it down, you have to focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it helps you to remember. Listen to me. I, it's 100% guaranteed what I'm saying to you. Sure. And if you want to remember it more, mm -hmm. you keep writing it down. Amen. Now, so let me ask you a question. What if God had not written it down for you? Mm. What kind of mess would you be in? Wow. You gotta get what I'm saying. Yeah. Amen. Let me think of let me think of something Brother Charles said uh, that I wrote down in one of my things that I keep writing down. It has to do with that thing in the book of Hebrews where the where the uh, the Lord is above us and around us and under us and before us and all that. But there's a couple of sayings Brother Charles has that he gave that I wrote down, and one of them was that fact, one of them was that statement about to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge, but to do the will of God is the greatest achievement. Amen. That's a Brother Charles statement. I know he stole it, but that's the point of repeating this down to generation to generation to generation. Right. Does everybody follow what I'm saying? Amen. So all I'm trying to get you to do is that, look, preparation has to be, not just preparing sermons, preparing yourself. Amen. Right. right. Okay, so what am I going to do this year? All right, so here's what I do. I have a calendar that helps me stay on track. Every day I ride in it. I have, a, I have all my little cards set next to me like this so I can make notes. I transfer the good ones in here. I got my notebook that I'm, that I'm writing my yearly stuff. See the notes on the front? See the notes on the front? Amen. Say so why? You can't remember all that unless you write it down. Amen. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you to the test. You know anybody's name that got saved during the play? You know why you don't know? Because you didn't write it down. Amen. And yet somehow we're supposed to keep up with that. You'd be upset if a mama ran off and left her baby in the crib when somebody was born, you'd be upset about that. Yeah. It's okay if a church lets these new babies just go without attendance. Amen. It ain't just a preacher's job. Right. Right. I didn't invite all them people. <clears throat> Amen. That's your responsibility as well. But you can't remember. You say what? You didn't write it down. How many times have you heard me say it? A thousand times. Somebody follow up. Somebody get their name. Somebody get their family. You say why? You need to follow up so we can get these babies to grow it. Amen. Okay, so. No, we're doing good on time. <clears throat> so, to me, this is where things change right here when we start doing it. So the verse I read to you in Proverbs 24 says, Prepare thy work without, make it fit for who? Thyself. And then afterwards, build thine house. You learn by doing. You can't read a, a, a book on a house, how to build a house. You learn by doing it. Right. Amen. The only way you get better is by doing it. Not sitting around. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. We have produced a generation of people like tonight who sit around and like to watch people do things. People sit around and watch cooking shows, <laughs> which is, yeah, it's a free country. But we sit around and watch people do things. We don't do nothing. And then when our team wins, somehow we say we won. No, you didn't do nothing. Right. All you did was eat popcorn and drink Coca-Cola and sit on your backside for right. three hours. Amen. See what I'm saying? We're not engaged. We're not doing it. 
Amen. And you have, the only way you learn is by doing it. Okay, well, I'm a terrible witness. Okay, you get better by doing it. Amen. Well, I'm doing a really tough, terrible job at praying. Okay, you get better by right. doing it. Amen. It's not it's not for some elect few. It yeah. just comes with practice. Amen. One of my uh, one of my favorite stories is is a guy got caught out of camp outside of camp, brother Charles. You don't have to say a password to get back in because them guys dress up like Americans. They got the accent so they yeah. can get in. He says password, <clears throat> and uh, and I'm trying to remember the details of what happened. He gave the password, and then he said, well, what are you doing out here anyway? He goes, well, i just outside the camp praying. And the guy goes, okay. Get down on your knees and start praying. So this wow. guy gets down on his knees and starts praying, and after about three minutes, he goes, you can get up and go. <laughs> he goes, man, nobody can talk to God like it unless he's been practicing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Amen. You know these people that repeat themselves every time they pray? They're not talking to God. Right. How about them preachers that get up there on the on TV and you hear them? They'll quote ten verses of scripture while they're praying. John R. Rice said to this guy, "I remember he said, he goes, what are you doing, giving all them verses while you're praying?' He goes, are you, are you giving them to God so he can look them up in his Bible?' He goes, "No, those are for the people." He goes, "That's your problem. You're talking to the people. You're not talking to God." Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. All right. Preparation has to be personal. Thyself. My plan is I'm going to seek the law of the Lord. My practice is I'm going to do it. I'm going to build it. I'm going to get involved. You say why? So I can get better. All right. Questions. Anybody, anything anybody want to add? Yes, sir, Harley. I got a question. You're talking about the, uh, making a, like a, a schedule time, you know? Yes. I had a lot of trouble because sometimes I'll be really good in the mornings. And then next week, I'll be really, really good in the evenings. And I, I just have trouble getting like a schedule set time. What would, what would your advice be? Okay, so why are you changing weeks? What, why is it different? I, don't, I have no idea. I mean, because you guys are doing something? I mean, what is it? I mean, I'm not trying usually, to trick usually you. Usually, you might have something to do, like I'll have homework or something. And it's just, I'll let something get in the way, so I'll move it to the other. <coughs> okay. And I'm, just, I'm not scheduled. Okay, well, the advantage I have is I run my schedule, okay? The only way you can run your schedule with your mother and dad's permission is you have to get up early. Right. That's the only thing. Right. But mine is different because I dictate everything. I run I run it because I have that kind of liberty. Okay, so instead, instead of beating yourself up about, okay, am I good in the morning, I'm good in the evening, just make use of the time that you have. Just redeem that time. He says, okay, next week I'll get back on track and then work on a little bit of time of staying that in the morning yeah. or staying that yeah. in the evening. But here, here's what I used to do that made it. If I got off, if I got off, I would just beat myself up for months. Every time I transitioned, when I went from construction to the school and then school back to construction and I went to Texas, the first month I didn't work. When I came back here, I didn't work. And for that month, I'm not good for nothing. I mean, it throws everything off. You're unpacking. And I'll be honest with you, for months, I'm no good at all. So what am I doing? Just like my other class, I'm making small adjustments to get back on the road. And I'm back on the road right now. And that, that is a key. What he's t that you, and I've done it. You cannot beat yourself up when you don't <coughs> succeed today. What is tomorrow? Thank you. You gotta forget those things which are behind and press toward the mark. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Yeah, it, it is, is true. Amen. It is true. Amen. That's why the front windshield is bigger yep. than yep. the rear view mirror. Right. You can't go forward looking in the rear view mirror. Amen. Yes, sir, Brother John. If I could add something, that's a part of my life I'm not proud of. Why is it the Navy with one of them stupid meetings because I got in trouble? Uh, they told us always it takes 21 days to form a habit. So if you can make yourself for 21 days do something, I found this out in my personal life after I started reading this book on prayer by Ian Bounds. I really got convicted about it. I started making that morning time my personal prayer life, and I've been doing that for more than 21 days. Now it's a reflex. At 5 o'clock, I'm up, and I'm downstairs with a cup of coffee, and, you know, 
I mean, I'm not trying to be Superman, but it's just, it, it's what helped me. I started, I forced myself to do it for 21 days straight, and it automatically just became out of body. I mean, that's what the, they told us, you know, the psychologist. Well, it, that it, that it, body it, can be trained, that mind right. can be trained, it can all be right. done. Now, and just because we can be honest with one another, you guys, you guys are going to struggle more yes. because of the weakness of that flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because y'all are younger, you won't take it as serious because everybody else does the work. Does that make sense? So I'll ask y'all a hard question. Let me ask it hard because we had a great time yesterday on the street. I'll ask y'all a hard question. What if the spiritual atmosphere of this place on Sunday morning was determined by y'all's prayer life? How well would it be? That goes for the rest of y'all. Yes, by all means. Now look, I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying somebody, somebody has spent hours all week not just studying. Because you can't study God into a message. You have to pray Him. In. Yes, sir. And so that's the difference of prayer and meditation. Shut that door. We're not finished, please. They're trying to get a peek too late. Does that make sense what I'm yes. saying? Hard. I'm not getting on to y'all. I'm just saying at your age, things are just a little different. Sure. And what's a blessing about y'all? You don't have to be here. You chose to be right. here, and that's what the right. blessing is. You're putting the flesh down, putting those desires you want to do. Well, the free time, I mean, it's a blessing to me that we have young people here. Right. I'm, I'm thankful for sure. the older folks, too. I'm not. Y'all have more time than they have. Right. 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 Anyway, anything else anybody have to add? We got on a hook here, so I'll give y'all time for it. Freddie, thank you for the encouragement, brother. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Brother Charles. I have a lot of problems too, brother. Yeah, but thank you for that. You. You're very welcome. Look, there is nobody in here that's never been to a point where you want to do better and be better, sure. and you've not been, right. and you have actually discouraged yourself. Right. Sure. Every one of us have done it. So here's what I want you, we all have to get to a point where we have to look ourselves in the mirror and go, yes, you're the problem. Right. Yeah. But me and you, we're going to get on track today. Right. Amen. So what David say, man, they're about to kill him. Yeah. You know what he said? Yeah. He encouraged himself. himself. Right. 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 Hallelujah. All right, you guys are dismissed. Take care. Amen.